Today, I have the pleasure to share a few of our experiences and stories with uh, ISS. My name is Vikram Patnagar. I'm the CEO uh, of Akenza. I'm going to dive today into a few use cases that we developed with ISS when they started from scratch, and uh, today, how they're extracting information and how it has impact into their business. May I ask, who in here is from facility management or from building or building automation? Please raise your hands. One, two, three, four. I wonder what the rest does. So let's get started. Wouldn't it be great if you in your building have the capability to see what your occupancy level is of rooms? Wouldn't it be great if you would only have to clean in those areas which actually have been used? And wouldn't it be great if you could put appliances and provide a service on demand when a button is pressed? These are questions which ISS two years ago came to us and asked us, how can we work on these subjects? How can we bring technology into our business? How can we gain from that data? And the most challenging part with all this technology, how can we integrate this into our business and how can we transform as an organization? Well, Akenza today, a 30 people uh, startup based out of Zurich. For us, that two years ago when we were hardly 10 people was a very big challenge. Not from a technology perspective, but having this massive tank of an organization that all of a sudden wants to utilize IoT to make their processes more efficient. So, we discovered in the first session, we discovered six different areas which might be relevant to them. First, smart spaces. How do I utilize my space? How do I clean my space? How do I maintain it? Second, my infrastructure, my building. There's this building management system, but apparently nobody can get to it. Why? Um, we identified that light is a crucial point where we can save energy, where we can optimize, and we can do much more with light. We can discover is an area being used by measuring the occupancy and energy management where I can optimize how is energy being consumed. I can first identify how are my assets on a level or an entire building, where are the strong energy consumers, how can I optimize that in the future, and how is that data relevant to my future planning of assets that I buy. Security from access control and QVAC system from doing maintenance in filter areas. So we discovered three different stakeholders in this picture, but looking at the IoT ecosystem, there are actually a lot, lot more stakeholders. These are our direct stakeholders. On the one hand side, we have the facility manager, the operator. On the other hand side, we have an owner or a tenant, and we have the people working in that environment. And all these stakeholders sort of need to share data with each other. And the first thing they do when you sit down and discuss with them where we're going to deploy this solution is, well, I don't want to give that person some of my data. And I only want to give them a certain piece uh, for that. And what if I one day change my facility management provider? Are they then going to stick with my solution? And is another solution going to come into place? So different challenges to orchestrate of how such an architecture can, can work out. On the one hand side, the facility manager wants to increase his service. He wants to up his service level while being able to use his resources as efficient and as, as sustainable as possible. So maximize the people on ground that you have, for example, in a building when it comes to servicing a building, but also being able to give your client a more in-depth analysis and data about how can they create a better environment. Then we have the tenant. A tenant is interested of how can I maximize my space, how can I uh, be more cost effective when it comes to management, and so forth. And then I have people in there who consume my building, who live in that building, and want to have services. So one great example is you pass a meeting room or you book a meeting room, you pass it, it's empty, and you wonder why these meeting rooms are always booked and every time I need one, I don't get one. So these are different challenges in different groups, which you started to analyze and started to prioritize. Now, having, it, having this big ship of an ISS and a startup working together, we understand that an organization that all of a sudden wants to do something might not necessarily have the technical readiness to actually maneuver into these new technologies and these new capabilities. So start simple. So we started with one of the higher impact cases, which is occupancy. 
if I am capable of reducing space and leveraging space in my office building in a new manner, in a more efficient manner, I can have more desks, I can have more floating desks, free desks, where I can show people where's the availability in a, in, in, in a building, I can reserve a desk, so when I need a desk, I always have a desk available, and as a facility manager, I know exactly how those desks are being utilized, completely anonymous, and therefore, I can optimize and I can give a recommendation to the customer of how that can be optimized. Another use case we identified with uh, the largest uh, telecommunication um, provider in Switzerland, Swisscom, they want to create a better environment for their employees, so they want to measure how is noise being developed in certain areas and give that information back to their uh, users. Um, they want to identify what temperature is, CO2 levels, air quality, and so forth. So therefore, we identified that we can create a more pleasant environment by putting sensors into place and getting that data. Now, we discovered that there's already a building management system in the building why can, for certain areas. Why can we not just access that data and bring that together? So there was sort of a hybrid solution of placing sensors there where it's required and getting existing data, merging that together, and getting insights and intelligence from that. Interesting fact, we did this at the same time when we started this project, we executed the same thing for the city of Zurich, where we discovered that over 70% of classrooms have 1,500 to 4,000 ppm over three to four hours. So very bad air, bad environment for, to concentrate and to work in. And the same thing for offices. Now, in the event of security, we want to be sure, we want to know exactly how many people are in the building, where are these people, and maybe in an event of fire, where do we have to go and look for certain people. So we're doing people counting with cameras where we can um, count on the edge how many people are walking in, where are these people moving through the zones, how do we need to optimize our building, and in the event of a threat, for example, a fire, we know in what area certain people are maneuvering. A very broad case, uh, feedback buttons, which you will also see on the, on the bathrooms. Uh, it's a very standard use case, but it's a very good way also for organizations to start learning how these new technologies function. And another case, service on demand, where I place a button into meeting rooms, where I place a button onto printers. If there's an incident, you can press a button, and that then creates an action into uh, a service management and service desk application, or it creates a text message, and so on. And the last case that we identify with smart parking, how can ISS provide a service to their customer for smart parking, where reception knows when what parking space is available? So, what we did for ISS is we came with a technical approach and we provided them with the Akenza Core, an IoT system that allows you to integrate any type of sensor. Starting very small, because for us this was a good test to identify with the customer at what level of knowledge is he with this new technology. And in Switzerland, there's a team of three people dealing with these new technologies. So in our first three, four months, we were busy training them, teaching them what the limitations of these technology are, what the challenges are. And not necessarily on a technical manner, but on a life cycle, manner, for a life cycle management um, when it comes to how do I maintain the devices, how do I need to service them, how do I integrate this into my process, how do I order. So, for us, as a technology company, all of a sudden, a whole lot of new problems came to the table of how we want to serve that. So we put the Akenza Core into place because it allowed them to test all these different new applications and all these different devices and take a lead in approach. So place one use case, place it within an area, place it with a customer, identify what the behavior is, and based on that data, then start iterating the application. And what the Akenza Core does is, essentially, it's a technology platform which has an agnostic connectivity layer on top. It allows you to connect Sigfox, LoRaWAN, your SIM cards, um, proprietary networks, so you have an entire layer to bring in any type of product that you like. Why is that important? Because sometimes I see products running on, a, on some technology, sometimes I see a product running on other technologies, but for me, as a facility manager, that doesn't necessarily matter. What matters for me is a strong, high-quality product where I have a very good life cycle management um, that I can provide with that. 
We take care, so the Akenza Core takes care of the entire data processing, which means gathering all that data or sending data back to, uh, to devices. And we have a rule engine on top that allows you to do event-driven actions. So for example, if 20 people have been on this bathroom, I can alert the person who is in charge of cleaning that a cleaning cycle is required. And I have a button in the washroom where I can press the button when the cleaning cycle has happened. And then we take care of the entire device management. With that agnostic approach, we can simply, we've integrated with all these different network providers that just allows you to pl click plug and play any type of device through any type of network. We store that data and then use that data again to start building our intelligence on top, which we call BI modules in here, um, which are business intelligence modules. So that in a technical nutshell, what we do, we uh, combine four different elements. Um, our system runs on any type of cloud. It runs on a Kubernetes cluster. So from there, you can spin it up on any cloud environment uh, as you please. Um, we have the connectivity manager. As uh, briefly mentioned, uh, LoraVan, Sigfox, SIM card management when it comes to Ericsson DCP, Huawei, or uh, Cisco Jasper. Um, we uh, support narrowband IoT. So the main IoT technologies that you use today, and you get this in one, in, in one lean suite. So you can actually start focusing on evaluating products and start gaining data. And you can set this up within a few minutes. So that gives us the capability of an agnostic approach to start bringing all these different individual data sources into one place and then start combining these data. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a sensor. It can also be a building management system. And that gives you one single unified management layer. And this is something which we are discovering with many of our clients that they're seeing different products out there and they want to avoid of setting up 10, 20 different silos. For example, the city of Zurich is one of our customers. Their biggest challenge is that they see amazing products and amazing solutions out there, for example, for tracking. But what they want to avoid is that they deploy an application, they deploy sensors, and this whole application is in one ecosystem or is in one silo and can from there on not be managed centrally. So that's where they put the Akenza core into place so they can manage all these different devices, stream that data together, and then transport it onto different divisions within a city. This exact same challenge has ISS, because sometimes in their scenario, the customer has devices, they have devices, then they're working with the telecommunication provider, they have certain products, so how do you get into control of all these different devices? And this is the approach we've taken with the Akenza core. And last, as I said, we run on a Kubernetes cloud, which allows us to deploy on any type of cloud. We provide it as a SaaS, where you can get started immediately, or you can deploy it directly into your own cloud subscription in order to be in full control of your data, to do more with your data, because you have direct database access. It allows you then to add certain AI applications to your business challenges. And now, all this part, a facility manager actually doesn't really care about because it's infrastructure. And IoT infrastructure facility manager wants use cases. He wants to have something wrapped and packed which he can throw at his customer and provide the service. And this is what they're doing with this product. They now have the capability to merge all these different customers into one system and now build applications on top. And this is how we unify the ecosystem with all these different components. So for them, personalized service, um, they have a reporting engine, they can gain reports, they can send out to their customers, they can improve their service, and they have a value add when it comes to their competitors of bringing a lot more deeper in-depth data of how customers function. A few examples of what we've done with the customer. Um, we've created these BI modules, which allow you to do all these different visualizations, map-based. We can create 3D buildings with an AI engine where we can take 2D floor plans, scan them in, and then with our, the AI engine, there are 3D models being created. We can go ahead and place the, place the sensors, which helps to identify and also to do indoor navigation for people. One of the most important cases for ISS is that today they have a static cleaning cycle. So they have a fixed plan where people go and clean. 
And what they want to do is they want to change from that and they want to come into a dynamic approach where they clean where it actually is required. So we build the business intelligence module for them, which tells them exactly where and when certain incidents happen. And then based on that data, the staff is accordingly um, tasked to do whatever uh, task they have to do. They can monitor the washrooms, which then allows them to make sure that the quality of the washroom is always clean, and we all like a clean washroom. Um, they use room and desk occupancy monitoring, uh, where they can analyze to the desk, the floor levels, they can compare different buildings of how they're being utilized, and it gives them suggestions of how they can optimize that space. Parking, I briefly mentioned. Um, smart parking solution in order to monitor how a parking space is being utilized indoor climate, CO2, VOC. We've done some very good, uh, we produced some very good results with the Decent Lab uh, sensor out there, which shows us very accurate data to then uh, act upon that. Service on demand, certain service requests um, that are being processed. Um, with Swisscom, we deployed them in, in different areas, in different uh, scenarios. Uh, one was in meeting rooms, the other one was for printers and waste. And what we discovered is that in the olden days, we had 10 to 15 minutes until one of the case was processed. So basically, an incident happened, somebody picked up the phone, then it went to the facility manager, then it went into the service desk, then from service desk, somebody had to call and make a deployment and so on. So it was quite a long cycle. Now, this we've shortened down to about five to 10 seconds from five to 10 minutes, because now they just press a button, it instantly goes to the system, we know which person is working where, and then we can deploy the task, what that person has to do. So in a nutshell, that is saving about 400 minutes just with a button. So the value for the customer is they can now uh, have immediate requests. They don't need an app uh, to do that. Um, they have an easy way to deploy these applications with customers. And their customers are not familiar with these technologies. So they need an approach where they can easily show the customer and bring them on to these new technologies. And most challenging is, how do I then integrate it into my business process? Um, so they've gained a lot of value out of the system. I think one of the biggest challenges that they're having today is the cost of sensors and uh, the life cycle management, because every time a human being has to go out there and fix a battery, then that becomes really expensive. So these are the sort of the bigger problems now of, I have all this technology in place, I have this information, but with such a large organization, how do I bring this data in and how do I teach my people to be able to use that data in an effective uh, way? Um, so lessons learned, clear identification uh, of the use case, uh, choosing the right network, choosing the right infrastructure, um, being able to aggregate those insights in an easy manner, which I don't need a very high complex knowledge in order to get my first results and to basically transfer that into my processes and integrate that into my business. We have a booth uh, on the side. I'm very happy. If you guys have any questions, please come by. Happy to show you a few live demos. Um, thank you. Yeah, Fikram, it sounds like you guys have been offering quite a few great services uh, with help of LoRa technology for ISS. You already started off by saying that at the time that you were approached by ISS that you were still a very small company. Um, as a startup back then, do you have any tips for maybe other small companies that have to work with giants like a company as ISS is? Um, absolutely, <laughs> that's, that's a tricky question. Um, it really, I mean, it all depends on who are your influencer in the organization and who, who are the people who can really drive transformation in organization. And sometimes we discover people who are in positions that would have the power but are not really willing to, to risk that mm -hmm. innovation part. Yep. So identifying the right stakeholders in the organization is absolutely key to maneuver with, like, with large organizations. Okay. And why is that a tricky question? Because the tricky, well, the question is not tricky, but identifying the right people is yeah, very yeah. tricky. Yeah. And making sure you can start forming teams within organizations yeah. where not individuals are driving, where entire teams can drive not only from a technology perspective, a lot more from identifying what their, what their problems are. Yeah. 
that sounds like a project on itself already, maybe. <laughs> but you've learned well and uh, very nice. Thank you so much once Thanks. again, Vikram Bhatnagar.